To any male or person in general that dismisses a woman or any other person in the industry, before you spew your bullshit, would you still come with your mother with that same energy? You wouldn't, because in most cases, mom probably balanced the budget. There were a lot of people saying that I was a fake founder, I was being hired to be the face of it so that some guy can run it. And it was really hurtful because I like built it from the ground up and I put like my heart and my soul into it. We have a chance to dismantle the old ways that we have seen in tech, in finance, in Silicon Valley. I think by taking up space, it's my way of protesting. Crypto is a male-dominated industry, no matter how we want to shake it. We have a lot of work to do. We have a lot of work to do. So I was at NFT NYC last year in New York. I was standing in line to get my badge for the conference and there was a guy behind me who just asked me, are you sure you're in the right place? I think the industry, the NFT industry, is a very, very, very male-dominated industry. Oh, why is it a male-dominated industry? Let's look at crypto. Crypto is a male-dominated industry. And then here comes NFTs. What do you purchase NFTs with? You purchase with crypto. Bitcoin was created for the people, by the people. And if you're gonna sit up here and think you're better than somebody and pick on them because they might know, not know how to custody their keys, or they don't know exactly how the tech works behind some of these altcoins or NFTs or Bitcoin, then you're here for the wrong reasons. And if you're actively attacking somebody, you're making fun of them and making them feel like shit, that's not okay. As an NFT collector, I noticed that, you know, when I was even just like in the discords, I was always being called like dude or sir or king because people just assumed that I was a guy. Even if I had like a female photo up, you know, with my profile picture, oh, you're just pretending to be a girl so you can get whitelisted or anything or get my priorities, which just kind of made me feel a little bit weird because it was like, I just can't win either way. So within the NFT space, 77% of the NFT art sales in 2021 are by artists that are men. And only 5% went to women artists. Welcome back to The O Show. Everything crypto and NFTs every day. I'm your host with the most, Wendy O. Make sure to like this video and share it so we push it out into the metaverse. I'm Crypto Wendy O, also known as Wendy O, and I am the largest crypto and NFT female-run YouTube channel in the world. So we are going to talk about um, Satoshi. We're going to talk about- I do live streams on YouTube every day at 10 a.m. PST. Some of the things I have to say you might not like. My job is really just to bring the information to my audience as non-biased as possible. On my channel, we talk about risk management. That is creating a trading or investing plan. And it's coming with a bullish scenario, a bearish scenario. And that is indicating when is your entry? How much are you willing to risk? How long do you want to hold this investment? This is Market Cipher. Market Cipher is looking absolutely bullish, beautiful, fantastic. Now, I'm just For really tired of seeing the disparity between the underdogs and the people in power because they think that we're stupid and we aren't stupid. I have daddy issues 100%, and that's not a bad thing. I lost my dad when I was 11 years old. It's kind of important age for girls. I dated a lot of toxic men. My decision, I experienced a lot of sexual abuse, a lot of physical abuse, a lot of verbal abuse. You know, moved to Hollywood, dated musicians, and you know, I had a, lived a very fast life up until about like 21. Boxing is so special to me because it's a great form of mental health and it's actually the only form of therapy that's helped me heal. I fight to stay alive. And so part of my job and what I do on my channel is to let the underdogs know that I come from where you come from. I always get the question, Wendy, why aren't there more women creating content? It doesn't feel good when you've poured your heart and soul into something and worked really, really hard to create a really dope content piece just to give unbiased information. And the comments are about your looks. You're ugly, you're fat, you're stupid. You look like a monkey, you look like a donkey, you look like a horse. When you go on YouTube and you look at the analytics, it says other channels like yours. And I look and it's three pages of all male run channels. And then there's me. And I'm like, holy cow, like that's it? Out of 15 other channels, I'm the only female channel in there? It's changed my life because I don't have to have a nine to five job and do a two hour commute. Never in a million years did I think I was gonna be a YouTuber, but I just get up every day and I get in front of the camera and fuck what everybody else says. I know who I am, my audience knows who I am, and I'm gonna continue to do this for my daughter. So she knows just because she's a little bit different, doesn't matter, it's gonna work out.
My name is Mindy Abdi. We are in the quantum art space in Santa Monica. It's this really huge, incredible space with digital art all around us. I'm an artist and an author and founder of Women Rise NFT. It's a collection of 10,000 NFTs. It's a project that is focused on art, that is celebrating women artists, scientists, coders, activists, and more. And the artwork itself is campaigning for various things. We have been able to build a community across platforms of 80,000 like-minded people coming together from all around the world under the Women Rise project. So I like to say, come for the art and stay for the cause. As a South Asian woman myself, as a brown woman myself, I wanted to take up my space in this new frontier that's at the intersection of art and technology. It's my way of communicating, it's my way of storytelling. There's a racial slur, it's called Paki, and I have been called that only once or twice in my life, outside of this space. And within this space, I take screenshots of it like every time. I think I've been called that like five or six times by completely anonymous people on Discord or on Twitter. But those five or six times don't cancel out the hundreds and thousands of people who are doing amazing things in this space. We have Web3, right? This, this space that is extremely new. Anybody, even if they learn about it today and enter the space today, is very early. We have a chance to dismantle the old ways that we have seen in tech, in finance, in Silicon Valley, in uh, business, in traditional businesses, and in the art world. My name is Tony Payne, and I am a still life photographer, host of the NFT talk show podcast, and an all around dope human being. With still life photography, it's a little challenging. You actually have to create the story. And I see myself as like a spiritual person and I see myself as somebody that tries to connect with things and people on a deeper level. And when you take something that's mundane, like, you know, a flower or a piece of fruit, or just like something that does not move and you try to find the essence of that thing, I think that is one of the most beautiful experiences. And you can put it together to create this beautiful image people admire. I think it's like a it's like a superpower. <laughs> Everyday Africa was my first collection of 55 NFTs of people just going about how they work, you know, how they go about their daily to put bread on their table. That was like a legacy collection for me. And that was my first official NFT sale. And it's been wonderful. When I started like really networking within the NFT community, I found out so much. I was like, you know what? I'm going to start a podcast where we have honest conversations about NFTs and crypto and tell people how it is from an artist's perspective. The only real way to truly, truly know how this works is to immerse yourself. Being able to manage my own creations and create these things that will live longer than I will, right? I think that there's nothing that compares to that in my eyes. Like just knowing that, you know, a hundred years from now, my work might still be relevant or be studied or be looked at as, oh, in 2022, these were the artists and this is what they were creating. My name is Amy. I'm the founder of Women of Crypto, and we are a woman-led Web3 company. Women of Crypto is essentially the first PFP collection, which is a profile picture collection, in the NFT space that was incorporating 3D female avatars into the space. We basically have sold out of an NFT collection. We sold out of 8,888 avatars, and you're able to use those avatars in the metaverse. We provided our holders utility, and right now we're working on building Women of Crypto as not only a Web3 brand, but we're trying to build it into a bigger media brand and build the IP of like woman of crypto itself. There's a bigger message to it, right? Because I want women to know that, of course, the crypto space can be very intimidating, but our goal is to show that, you know, anybody can get into space because there's so much opportunity in it, as long as you have the right resources, education. 
when I was in these discords, people didn't believe that I was a woman. But at that time, there were no 3D avatars for women. And so like, I didn't know what to use because I didn't want to represent myself as an ape or like another guy, you know? And also they're all like male characteristic traits on these collections. So I wanted a collection that's more representative of women that they can use as a like profile picture, just use as like an avatar for themselves in the metaverse. I've been told to my face too that, women can't run businesses. It definitely hurts, but in a way it's kind of more motivating. And I think that's kind of what, what drove me to be so passionate about this project because I was always told since I was a kid, oh, that's cute, you're an entrepreneur, you're into business. But I think that Women of Crypto just became so big out of nowhere that it was like, it was my time to be able to show we're good enough to be in business or be an entrepreneur. We're smart enough, we're more than capable of being able to run a business. I got like hundreds to thousands of DMs of women being like, this is the first project that I resonated with and this is my first collection that I like wanted to buy because I felt like connected to you in some way. And I think that it's very important that like we as women stick together because we can just uplift each other and actually build a community within the NFT space, you know, where we don't feel like we're an outlier. My goal isn't to separate it even further. It's not like, oh, we're females in the space and then there's males. It should be like, we're just coexisting in Web3, you know? And like, we're all capable of being in the space and making it grow. We push it out into the metaverse. More women should be in the space because we are here to improve our quality of life. Everybody deserves it. Women deserve that shot. People that identify differently deserve that shot. Like regardless of what your race, your color, like whatever it is, everybody deserves a good quality of life. And I think crypto is a good opportunity for those people. So I think more women are definitely going to get into crypto and NFTs. I think, you know, women, we're also very careful. We don't just jump into things. It's so important for us to set really good examples because how do you bring people into something? They see women are thriving and doing good. I think more women will be encouraged to join. <laughs>